Number 38, complete and balance each of the following half reactions, which is only steps two through five in the half reaction method of balancing redox reactions. In this case, we have to do letter H. So in this case, we have to balance Cl minus, and that's aqueous, yields, uh, I believe this is chlorate ion, ClO3 minus aqueous. And we have to do this in a acidic solution. So I wrote down all of the steps for balancing an acidic solution for redox reactions. However, since they only gave us a half reaction, we only have to do steps two through five because step one of the whole, you know, the whole shebang here is to break it into the half reaction. They did that already for us. So thank you very much. Now we just have to do steps two through five. Step six through nine is when you have both half reactions. We'll see that later on. Now, let's do it. First things first is please do not mix up these steps. These steps are in order for a reason. It just makes everything more easy. So just try to remember these steps, okay, in the order that they are. So the, the second step, or the first thing we're going to do, is we need to balance all elements in our reaction, right, all elements except for hydrogen and except for oxygen. So you cannot touch this oxygen balancing in this step. You balance all the other elements. So I only have one other element, right? I have a chlorine on my left side and I have a chlorine on my right side. But I have one chlorine and I have one chlorine. So that's balanced already. So basically step number one is, is already done, or step number two, right? Whichever one you want to think of here. So we move on. Now we balance oxygen by adding H2O. The, the thing here that you have to think of is if you need to add one oxygen to any side, you will add one H2O. So if you add two oxygens, you need to add two H2Os. If you need to add three oxygens, you'll add three H2Os. Now let's see. There's only an oxygen on this side, and how many? There's three of them, right? It was ClO3. So three oxygens on this side, no oxygens on this side. If you need a number, that's the number of H2Os that you need to add. So I need three oxygens, so I will add three H2Os. And that step is done. We balance the oxygen. Now we go to the next step. The next is balancing the hydrogens. And you balance the hydrogens by adding H+. And don't forget that plus up there, okay, guys? So if you need one hydrogen you need to add one H plus. So if you need two hydrogens, two H pluses. If you need three hydrogens, three H pluses. Okay, so let's see. I have no hydrogens on my product side. However, on my reactant side, I see that I have an H here. There's two, but then there's three of these. So how many total hydrogens? Six, right? Three times two is six. So I have a total of six hydrogen on my left. I have a total of zero hydrogens on my right. So it looks like I have to add my hydrogens here. And whatever number you need to add is the amount of H pluses that you add. So I need to add six H plus ions to balance it out. Okay, so that gets rid of this step. Now we need to balance the charges by adding the electrons. So this is where we're going to start adding E negatives. And you always add the electrons to the more positive side. But first we got to figure out which side is more positive. Well, if I split this down the middle, right, this is going to be a gauge as to what the total charge of the left side is and what the total charge of the right side is. All you got to do is just look in the upper right-hand corner. Those are the overall charges of the components. So you see how these guys all have charges in the upper right hand corner, you're going to be working with those. However, for water, I don't see a charge in the upper right hand corner. So it's not positive and it's not negative, it's neutral. So it's a zero, right? Zero is the only number that's not positive nor negative. Now it doesn't matter that there's three waters here because any number times zero is zero. So this would be an overall zero charge. Coming in with this chloride ion, which is a negative, and it's a negative one, right? And there's only one of them, 
So one times a negative one is an overall negative one. And just like these two, um, we'll say components are being added together, I have to add these charges together. So zero plus a negative one or zero minus one is an overall negative one charge. So I'm gonna I'm hold that off for a little bit. Now I come over here and I do the same thing. Let's work from left to right. There's a negative charge here, so that assumes that it's a negative one. And I only have one of them. There's no coefficient in the front. So this would be a negative one charge. Now let's work with the hydrogens, right? I have a plus charge, and that's assuming that it's a plus one, but I have six of them. So six times a plus one is a plus six. And just like these two guys are coming together, you gotta add these together as well. And I like to put the answer here just so that I have my overall charges next to each other. So a negative one plus a positive six or a negative one plus six or six minus one is a positive five. Okay, so now we got to add those electrons. We got to balance these charges. Which side is the more positive side? Because that's the one that's going to get the electrons added. Well, from a negative one or a plus five, the plus five is more positive. So I know that I'm going to add my electrons to my product side. But the question is, how many am I going to add here, right? Am I going to add one electron? Am I going to add two electrons, three electrons? The answer is always, how many numbers are the two overall charges apart from each other? You think about it in terms of a number line. How many numbers does it take for me to get to a plus five all the way to a negative one? The answer is six, right? Because from a plus five, you have to go to, you're five numbers away, three, two, one, you're five bunny hops away from going to a zero, and then you gotta go the extra step to get to that negative one. So there's actually six numbers difference between a plus five and a negative one. So always just think of like a number line. That answer, the six, is how many electrons I will add. So in this case, I will add six electrons. And now we're done. There's nothing that I can cancel. Everything is unique across the board. So your final answer would be 3H2O plus Cl minus, which is aqueous, yields ClO3 minus aqueous plus 6H plus, and then plus six electrons. And that's it. So guys, what do you think? Hopefully this helped. I think we are entering the, the, the land of now doing a full-blown uh, redox reaction. So hang tight for that. It's coming up in a little bit. If you guys are on the playlist, uh, if you're not, I highly suggest you being on the playlist because it has all of these questions all grouped together, all nice for you. So it's easier to find what you're looking for. Um, if you guys want to check out the rest of the channel, we got physics uh, videos, we got math videos. So hopefully we can help you out in those areas as well. And if you want to help us out, if you want to help us out, tell your friends, tell your classmates, tell anybody that this service is this. I think it's a pretty cool service. What do you think? I really love talking to you guys, and I really love helping you guys. You guys rock. Good luck on your tests and quizzes, and I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye-bye.